STS-27 was the 27th NASA Space Shuttle mission, and the third flight of Space Shuttle Atlantis. Launching on 2 December 1988 on a four-day mission, it was the second shuttle flight after the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster of January 1986. STS-27 carried a classified payload for the U.S. Department of Defense, ultimately determined to be a lacrosse surveillance satellite. The vessel's heat shielding was substantially damaged during liftoff, impacting the right wing, and crew members thought that they would die during re-entry. This was a situation that was similar to the one that would prove fatal 15 years later on STS-107, but compared to the damage that Columbia had sustained on STS-107, despite Atlantis experiencing more extensive damage than Columbia had sustained, the damage was over less critical areas and the missing tile was over an antenna which gave extra protection to the wing. The mission landed successfully, although intense heat damage needed to be repaired. Topic: Crew. Topic: Crew seating arrangements. Topic Mission Summary The Space Shuttle Atlantis OV-104, at the time the youngest in NASA's shuttle fleet, made its third flight on a classified mission for the United States Department of Defense DOD. It deployed a single satellite, USA-34. NASA archival information has identified USA-34 as La Crosse 1, a side-looking radar, all-weather surveillance satellite for the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office and the Central Intelligence Agency .The mission was originally scheduled to launch on 1 December 1988, but the launch was postponed one day because of cloud cover and strong wind conditions at the launch site. Liftoff occurred from Launch Complex 39, Pad B, LC39B, at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, on the 2nd of December 1988 at 9:30 Eastern Standard Time. Atlantis touched down on the 6th of December 1988 on runway 17 at Edwards Air Force Base, California, at 18:35 Eastern Standard Time. The total mission elapsed time at wheels stop was 4 days, 9 hours and 6 minutes. Atlantis was returned to the Kennedy Space Center on 13 December and moved into an OPF on 14 December 1988. There has been speculation that an EVA was conducted during this mission. Interviews with members of the crew several years after the flight confirmed there had been a problem with the satellite upon release, whereupon a rendezvous with the satellite was affected and repairs performed. These unspecified repairs could have necessitated a spacewalk, likely performed by Ross and Shepard. As a classified DOD mission, details or confirmation of such an EVA remain unreleased. Topic: Tile damage. Atlantis thermal protection system tiles sustained extensive damage during the flight. Ablative insulating material from the right-hand solid rocket booster nose cap had hit the orbiter about 85 seconds into the flight, as seen in footage of the ascent. The STS-27 crew also commented that white material was observed on the windshield at various times during ascent. The crew made an inspection of the shuttle's impacted starboard side using the shuttle's Canadarm robot arm, but the limited resolution and range of the cameras made it impossible to determine the full extent of the tile damage. The problem was compounded by the fact that the crew was prohibited from using their standard method of sending images to ground control due to the classified nature of the mission. 
The crew was forced to use a slow, encrypted transmission method, likely causing the images NASA engineers received to be of poor quality, causing them to think the damage was actually just lights and shadows. They told the crew the damage did not look any more severe than on past missions. One report describes the crew as infuriated that mission control seemed unconcerned. When Commander Gibson saw the damage he thought to himself, we are going to die, and did not believe that the shuttle would survive re-entry. If instruments indicated that the shuttle was disintegrating, he planned to tell mission control what I thought of their analysis in the remaining seconds before his death. Upon landing, the magnitude of the damage to the shuttle astonished NASA. Over 700 damaged tiles were noted, and one tile was missing altogether. The tile was located over the steel mounting plate for the L band antenna, perhaps preventing a burn through of the sort that would ultimately doom Columbia in 2003. There was almost no damage present on the orbiter's left side. STS-27 Atlantis was the most damaged launch entry vehicle to return to Earth successfully. A review team investigated the cause beginning with a detailed inspection of the Atlantis TPS damage, and a review of related inspection reports to establish an in-depth anomaly definition. An exhaustive data review followed to develop a fault tree and several failure scenarios. This and other information gained during the review formed the basis for the team's findings and recommendations. Topic: <laughs> Wake-up calls. NASA began a tradition of playing music to astronauts during the Gemini program and first used music to wake up a flight crew during Apollo 15. Each track is specially chosen, often by the astronauts' families, and usually has a special meaning to an individual member of the crew, or is applicable to their daily activities. Gallery See also List of human spaceflights List of space shuttle missions <laughs>